the day AK. Uh, I want to respect all protocol and to thank you colleagues and friends for, for coming to this official opening. My remarks are quite, uh, are not that long. I want to thank very much uh, the European Union uh, and CBM for supporting us first and believing that we can do it. I think that uh, in the countries that you saw in that video clip, uh, there are persons with disabilities at uh, uh, various levels of developing their plans. I think we need to give ourselves a very big round of applause because Lesotho was not only the first ambassador of our country, but it is also the leading country when it comes to developing these plans. Let's give ourselves a big round of applause. The, the plan answers many questions, and I think one of the key questions that it answers, and, and I want our partners to particularly uh, listen to this point. Very often we find people saying, look, there is no collaboration between government and, and civil society organizations. But we are saying, uh, here is an example of partnerships and cooperation between government and civil society organizations in the disability sector. And I think that is to be applauded. And of particular importance is the leadership role that was played by government throughout this process. I, I, I recall, May Director, that when you were preparing for the round table, you had a working group uh, that was comprised of all government ministries. And one of the values that uh, prevailed in that working group, which I remember very well, was the commitment to quality. We had to send away bags and documents back to their suppliers because we were not happy with the quality. And this commitment to quality was an outstanding uh, measure of your understanding of the fact that the needs of persons with disabilities should not be just add-ons, but that we should try to make sure that uh, there is quality in the work that we do. As the Honorable Minister mentioned in his uh, speech, uh, we have an agreement with the government of Lesotho uh, that, is, that has got a duration of 10 years. During these 10 years, we pledge our support, our skills, any access to resources that we might get in order to make sure that this, the objectives of this plan are realized. And in addition, uh, we will refer any forms of support. I understand, uh, just speaking from uh, His Excellency, the representative of the Japanese uh, government, and uh, I mean of the uh, Chinese government, and I know my colleagues from, uh, from JICA, that we have been working with not only uh, in countries that are within Southern Africa. Uh, you may know that my friend there was actually in Rwanda at one point. That is where uh, he used to work. Uh, they are not new to the disability field. I want to call on them to now say, here is the document that we have been waiting for. And we, as, as the director said, we will be adding on uh, new items, new challenges uh, that will arise as we go on. Uh, just now, we have just had the UN pass uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, which all of them, all the 17 goals, not just those that refer to disability, but all the 17 goals must be uh, made to benefit persons with disabilities in Lesotho. So we want to welcome our partners and say, now is the time to come on board so that you can make our dream succeed and the dream of uh, a country where we can demonstrate good practice in the improvement of the lives of persons with disabilities. The startup proposals have already been made, and I want to make a special appeal to the Ministry of Finance. The way it works is like this. Once a strategy like this is developed, then government has got a way in which it cooperates with international development partners. I was recently at the World Bank uh, in Washington, and I met a lot of our good friends there. Uh, some of you might know our good friend, uh, uh, advocate uh, Charlotte McLean Chapo, who used to work uh, for the Human Rights Commission in South Africa, and then he, she went on to work uh, for USAID in Washington, and now she is with the World Bank. 
And her advice was, if now that you have reached where you are with a, with a concrete plan on the table, you now need to work with the Ministry of Finance to ensure that this plan is presented to the World Bank uh, because it has to come from government. And then once it is uh, presented to the office of the World Bank uh, here in Lesotho, I think your offices may well be uh, in Lesotho or in, uh, in Pretoria, I'm not sure then we submit that to the uh, offices of the World Bank and then also inform them uh, at the World Bank that that, uh, that policy has now been submitted and that all parties should now come and support it. Uh, the World Bank has different pockets of assistance. It's not, that what, it's not just what you know about the loans that are given to, to government. They also have a, a, a few pockets of uh, trust funds as well and incidentally the government of Japan uh, he's got a, uh, a, a very uh, huge stake, uh, stake uh, in some of the trust funds that are managed by the World Bank. So therefore, let's work to, together on this, and my appeal director is to the Ministry of Finance now, because we now need the Ministry's support and leadership in order to ensure that we attract as much uh, support as we can from development cooperation partners. I want to say that we will continue to provide technical support as other, as always we are available. I know that there may be anxiety that uh, our program is coming to an end uh, in December this year, uh, but our program, uh, our support to Lesotho and to the government of Lesotho and to the organizations here will continue beyond uh, the, uh, the, the end of the program and we hope that we might be able to attract new funding uh, that will enable us to continue. I want to complete by thanking Mayor Palace and Portly. I think you need to stand up, Mayor, so that they can see you and appreciate the services. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Mayor Palace works with a team of very dedicated people that have seen everything that we need to see in the six countries that they work in. And they have worked through difficult political environments uh, where sometimes they are uh, changes in governments and where sometimes there are elections, where sometimes once a government has changed, you have to start all, start all over again. But we are happy to see that in Lesotho, they, despite the change of government, there has been a continuation of goodwill and high political support for disability work. We thank you and we appreciate the work that you do with your team. I want to stop here, Program Director, and thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. And we hope that you will cherish the energy that that trophy brings and the certificate that we also gave to the government of Lesotho. Thank you very much. We are going to have a statement then by the EU delegation. Uh, as the EU, we are currently supporting a few projects of Landford. I'll mention two. Uh, one of them is COPDEM. Uh, through the COPDEM, um, that's where the disability mainstreaming plan was developed. We are also supporting one of the projects uh, under Landford where they are advocating and uh, uh, promoting access to services uh, for persons with disability. This is uh, the support, I think, if I'm correct, started in 2013, and uh, we are now in the final year of the project. And it is working or being implemented in four districts, if I'm correct. That is Beria, uh, Maseru, Mohalis Hook, and Butabuti and they're working in several councils uh, within those uh, districts. Within the project that we are supporting, uh, the, the, the one that I've just mentioned, we are really, or Landford is really doing a lot of advocacy work, and as the EU, we are really honored uh, to be supporting that project. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, say that the EU is very committed to supporting civil society in Lesotho. Last year, around June, July, the EU developed uh, uh, what we call the EU Roadmap on Engagement of the Civil Society. 
Uh, that is a document more like uh, the disability mainstreaming plan. Uh, when the document was developed, uh, it was a very uh, highly consultative process where we got the views of civil society on how they would like to be or to cooperate with the EU. And Lanford was one of the key stakeholders uh, when developing such a, a, a plan. And uh, I must say, when we were uh, developing that plan, although it was highly consultative, we, uh, the, we were much guided by the questions which were asked by, or by um, a questionnaire that we had developed. So when the document was developed, the civil society focused more on the questions that were asked rather than uh, responding to their own needs, which were beyond the, the questions. And currently, as a EU, we are in the process of updating the document because we have realized that it has left so many areas which are key to, to civil society organizations. And we are hoping to finalize the process of updating the document by December. And uh, I think uh, the disability mainstreaming plan is coming at an opportune time when we are now updating the, the plan. We'll still continue consulting Lenford uh, when we update uh, the roadmap so that uh, their issues can now be um, incorporated fully into the, the roadmap. The roadmap has a few focus areas on how the EU would like to, to engage with the civil society. One of them uh, which is key to, to disability is the issue of capacity building. Uh, that uh, document wants to respond or to answer how the civil society in Lesotho would like to be capacitated beyond financial support. Of course, civil society in Lesotho need financial support, but beyond financial support, I think civil society have other uh, areas where they would like their capacity to be developed. Financial support is one of them, and um, recently we, we, we launched a call for proposal on human rights uh, where we are trying to, to, to respond uh, to, to that. And then dialogue with civil society. Dialogue is very important, ladies and gentlemen. I was a bit disappointed when coming to this meeting this morning, and I saw that there, there were a few people in this room. Uh, I know that uh, disability is one of those uh, issues which are not in fashion. But uh, um, disability has to be in fashion, because now disability deals with human rights. So I would like you, when going back to your colleagues and uh, counterparts, to call on them to support disability. I hope uh, that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this document will be put to use, and particularly within the Ministry of Social Development. Uh, I want to call on the Ministry of Social Development to lead by example. If you are going, you have developed uh, such a good uh, document uh, to mainstream disability, it has to start in your house. I didn't see today uh, other directors within the Ministry of uh, Social Development. I know there are several uh, directors or, uh, or several departments within the Ministry of Social Development. Where is somebody who is representing the issues of children? Where is uh, somebody who is representing the issues of elders within social development? It has to start within your house as social development. Make sure you mainstream disability within the ministry, then you can take the disability mainstreaming um, to other ministries and other uh, development partners. But uh, having uh, said all that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to, to thank the ministry and Lenford for taking up uh, this task, which I, I understand it was a very difficult task, and coming up with this uh, uh, document. The, one of my questions earlier on was whether there will be a midterm evaluation of uh, this plan. I think there needs to be a, an evaluation, uh, even if it's not uh, a midterm, two, three years down the line, just to uh, check on the pro progress made within the plan, whether it is a working document, is a document that uh, people find easily 
uh, to work with. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for all that I've said. Now we, we are going to have a presentation by um, Japan International Corporation agent. Uh, this is my great honor to be here today, uh, to be invited uh, for this uh, historical event for the launch for the disability mainstream in Japan. Uh, JICA has been working for the disability field for uh, quite uh, many years, uh, but especially in Asia countries. But uh, since uh, uh, I think 2002, uh, JICA started to move into African continent. And as uh, uh, Mr. A.K. Dube mentioned, I was dispatched in Rwanda as the first uh, JICA expert to conduct the disability project. And now uh, JICA dispatched me again to South Africa uh, three years ago. And uh, we have been doing uh, the activities for disability mainstreaming, together with the South African government especially. However, uh, we have, uh, of course, the cooperation with uh, other neighboring countries like Lesotho, Swaziland, Namibia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe so far. Uh, JICA has a scheme to uh, provide the trainings uh, for uh, African uh, officials and people with disabilities in Japan. And uh, here I have a list of the participants who participated in those trainings in Japan. And uh, I have talked to some of them. And uh, as a JICA, uh, we will be following up those participants, and uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, uh, work together utilizing the learnings from Japan. And uh, as uh, many people mentioned, uh, I believe that I also uh, think that uh, this kind of opportunity for civil societies and the government working together and you know, celebrating this big moment together. So uh, I always think that uh, the participation of the people with disability is quite important, not only for disability mainstreaming, but also empowerment of persons with disabilities. And I was uh, actually surprised to see uh, people from uh, uh, various uh, ministries here. Uh, to be honest, uh, I haven't seen so many cases like this in other countries. So uh, this is a big step, I think, and there's a, a, a prosperity. And uh, uh, as I said, the regional network, that is a kind of key, I mean, uh, that is a focus area for JICA, especially in the Southern African region. And uh, for example, together with uh, African uh, Disability Alliance and other uh, organizations like SAFOT, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, working together with uh, AU in the future. As a JICA, we'd like to have more networks, especially in Southern African region. JICA has been uh, uh, discussing with the Department of Social Development in uh, South Africa to extend our project for disability mainstreaming and also empowerment of people with disabilities. And our focus, maybe in the first uh, or second or third year, will be maybe South Africa, but concurrently, we would like to invite the people from other countries like Lesotho. So uh, I really would like to uh, have more partnership with uh, uh, 
the uh, officials uh, in Lesotho, and especially also the people from civil society, including people with disabilities. So uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, on behalf of JICA, I would like to say uh, thank you very much again uh, for inviting uh, uh, me uh, for this kind of uh, historical event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dati, from JICA. Uh, I would like to call upon Langford Executive Director to come up the stage that is food. Uh, disability moved from being a social welfare issue to a development issue. This simply means that this simply means that disability should be addressed through development of disability inclusive laws, policies, programs and services. Uh, most importantly, persons with disabilities must be part of the inclusive and accessible design, planning, monitoring, and implementation and evaluation of the uh, government programs through their representative organizations. The government of Lesotho has played a major role in terms of making sure that uh, persons with disabilities participate in the development of uh, this plan so that the, their rights and needs, so that the, the needs and rights of persons with disabilities could be incorporated into the